<sighs> I'm gonna like sue their obvious for coming back. I'm gonna do like a newscaster thing. <laughs> One. Welcome, and this is part two of our quest to find out what our favorite movie of all time is, at least up until this point. Obviously, we will see other movies that haven't come out yet, or others that have come out that we just haven't seen. I might have butchered that, by the way. Christmas the, edition. Christmas edition. <laughs> uh, so if you haven't seen part one, uh, it was our favorite Christmas movies of all time, up to this point. You get the idea. Yeah. Um, if you haven't seen it, go watch it real quick. It's like... 10 minutes maybe? Check 15? it out. And no. you have no idea why we're doing this, no. and you don't get it from the first one, let's go back and listen to some of the podcast episodes and figure out what's going yeah, on. Yeah, really listen. dig in there, yeah, definitely. Uh, so this is part two. We're going to stay in the Christmas theme, but we're going with our favorite non-Christmas movies that also just happen to take place around Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think... No, there's no other explanation for it. I mean, I was we're, gonna we're say, gonna give you some examples. I was gonna say that you know maybe it has to have some of the Christmas spirit. Yeah, at least definitely. It, at least that like the storyline typical to Christmas movies. You know what I mean? Like, there's always like that. You know, the person gets redeemed or puts his family first. There, there's a couple of of really uh, big notes that are frequently hit. That's yes, right. but also at the same time, that may not be like the main. Maybe not the Point main of the thing. movie? No, I feel like for a good faux Christmas movie, it just has to be an enjoyable Christmas movie with bare minimum the aesthetic. If you can get the aesthetic down, it's right. But hey, let's get into this. Essentially, yeah, I just want to get one quick analogy to, to kind of like nail this home. <laughs> okay, Essentially, a movie that would make this list is a movie if you were together with your family and they're all <laughs> just chanting, let's watch a Christmas movie. Yeah. And you're a little bit of a Grinch. You don't like Christmas. Yeah. But you know there's a few movies near and dear to your heart that you could kind of get away with BSing as a Christmas movie, mm -hmm. and you weasel it in there, those yeah. are these movies. But just to be just to be clear, The Grinch is a Christmas movie. Yes, The Grinch is a Christmas movie. Even it would though, not be on even this Even though list. it's not even on Earth, though. But mm. maybe. Anyway, why don't right. you do your first one? I guess I'll do my first one. Let's I see. I think I have some bad choice this time. time. Uh, so my runner-up... <clears throat> it's going to be The Royal Tenenbaums. Christmas movies generally have a family... Mm -hmm. And that family overcomes some kind of obstacle or tribulation amongst in Christmas time. And that could be getting used to spending time with each other, uh, some other foreign family members coming in, some okay. wacky vacation. Are you getting divorced? At the moment, no. But uh, it doesn't look good. Was it our fault? No. Well, obviously, we made certain sacrifices as a result of having children, but uh, no, Lord, no. In a, in a weird way, Royal Tenenbaums is like a more dysfunctional Christmas vacation. Exactly. Yeah, so this movie was directed by Wes Anderson, who directed yeah. um, all the other Wes Anderson movies. <laughs> uh, if you've seen five <laughs> seconds of the movie, you know it's directed by Wes Anderson. Uh, yeah, and it was written by Wes Anderson and also by Owen Wilson, who's known for wow memes and videos on yeah. the internet. And being Wes Anderson's college roommate, that's why they're such bros. Nice, I didn't yeah. know that. They're roommates in wow. college. Wow. Wow. Uh, yeah, $21 million budget, uh, almost 277000 at open. Not super great. Yeah. But they grossed $52 million. It did yeah, that. and this has become a cult film. Oh, and as I was saying about their family tribulations, it's about a, an extremely... Um, a family that's not close together. They're, they're all mm. estranged from each other at this yeah. point. Um, and the father comes back and wants to reconnect everybody. And that's what kind of gives this thing the whole like Christmas feel because like hearts mm -hmm. are changed. Uh, people yeah. become closer. It's a beautiful movie. It's about family. Yeah, it's a West Anderson movie. Yeah, it's it a West Anderson feel nice. movie. So Richie, this illness, this closeness to death uh, has had a profound effect on me. I feel like a, a different person. I really do. Dad, you were never dying. But I'm gonna live. Let me make sure I get this in the microphone. My first runner-up, and check this out, everybody. Earlier today, if you would have asked me, like, hey, what's your runner-up today? I was going to be like, <laughs> Batman Returns. Hey, David, you're shooting that video earlier on. Yeah. Hey, what's your hey, runner-up? what's your runner-up? Batman Returns would have been my runner-up. It takes place during Christmas. It's amazing. 
I mean, it's, it's a, a great superhero movie. movie. It is not a Christmas it's movie. It's not a Christmas Perfect movie. Example. It would have been a good faux Christmas movie. But I was talking with Michelle, and I was asking her a little bit about her opinions. She brought this movie up. I could have resist. It's just Friends. Oh, uh, we're going to have to watch it again. We're going to have to, well, yeah, we're going to have to watch it one more time. For sure. It's a Ryan Reynolds movie, and it's Ryan Reynolds doing everything Ryan Reynolds does. Yeah, just knocking it out of the park. Knocking it out of the park. He's got, just like, sarcasm. He's super got, being yeah. Ryan Reynolds. Nailing yeah. it. Yeah. Sorry, I had to make fun of you. Oh, that opening scene just It's so, so sad. Good. It's, so, it's so good. And basically, these kids are, like, in the 90s, and he likes the girl, but the girl sees him as, like, the best friend, and then he gets teased, and basically, the movie jumps ahead 10 years. He's super successful. He comes back to the tiny little town he's in. He uh, is a music producer, and he has um, Amy uh, Amy Smart. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Anna Ferris is the pop star. Anna Ferris is like this Britney Spears style character, who's just like probably way totally brattier, totally super talentless. talentless. Sorry, Britney. I, that was mean. That was rude to compare you. Wow, David. It takes place during Christmas. He goes home, and the whole thing is during Christmas. Uh, except the well, the end of the movie is like at New Year's. So could it be a faux New Year's movie? Hey, it's a faux Christmas movie. The point is, it's hilarious. Uh, the only downside I can see to it is I watched it pretty recently. Um, in 20 years, this movie will be super dated. I could see that. I could definitely It's going to be that. so early 2000s. It's like all the 90s references to when he's in high school. Even the pop singer, she's like, you watch it now and you're like, what? It, it, it feels weird again. Um, and I actually... Looked up a fun fact on this movie. Hit me with it. Uh, Anna Faris, before she filmed scenes, would just like down Red Bulls constantly. <laughs> just to, to like just keep be, that like, jittery, wired, like wired jittery and crazy. She's hilarious in this movie. Everyone's really funny. And I don't know who the actor is. He's not anyone like big. But Ryan Reynolds' little brother in this movie is also Oh, hilarious. yeah. Nails the... Yeah. That's one of my favorite parts about this movie. Yeah. Is it always makes me think of like me and my little brother. And like yeah. some things will never change. It's a perfect relate. Even though they're older, they're still older brother, little brother. Oh, the mom is just and one of my favorite great, characters yeah. in anything ever. She's just the sweetest lady, super kooky, These probably have, a drug addict. The, the movie has like great background characters. the The city that they set up is like totally believable. Yeah, and it has that kind of like innocent small town Christmas thing in a weird way, like kind of like <laughs> it's a wonderful life. It's like George Bailey came back, but George Bailey's like super sarcastic. <laughs> And he's with some like and a little model. vindictive. Besides, you don't have to show off for Jamie. Just, just be yourself. Be yourself. Be yourself. Be yourself. <laughs> uh, so my top pick, mm. Gremlins. Ooh. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Uh, so Gremlins. If you've never seen it, it's about um. Let me see if I can give you a quick rundown. Yeah, rundown. it's about a general in the Roman army who uh, the king has decided to that he is going to rule after he dies because he doesn't trust his son. Uh, the son finds out about this, gets super jealous, and tries to have the general killed and his family killed. Uh, the general escapes the the murder in the in the woods. It's a super cool scene. Uh, rides back to the house, but he's already killed, like, the son. And can we just watch like... Gladiator? Can we just, can we just stop <laughs> We're gonna stop. We're just gonna watch Gladiator right now. Why did you do that to me? I it's just too wanted... late to start Gladiator. I'm sorry, I wanted to see how long you would let that go on. It just, it just I should have let it go on longer, today. to be honest. I should have waited until you got all the way through yeah. the movie. But... but we'll talk about Gladiator when we get there, because it's gonna yeah. be one of my picks what is for that? sure. Favorite period movies. Yeah, or, like... Favorite Gladiator movies. Whoa. What other Gladiator movies have I seen? Okay, anyways, anyway, moving on. Sorry. Gremlins. Sorry. You know what it is. You've seen this movie. Yeah. If Here's you haven't that. seen this movie, how are you even working a computer on right now? Because you're just a little baby. Babies shouldn't be on computers. Uh, Gremlins. Horror movie about this furry little fun yeah. creature that a boy gets as a gift from his traveling salesman father. Uh, and he's warned by this creepy Chinese man. This, that mm. felt a little bit racist, but I didn't mean it in a racist <laughs> way. <laughs> not, not that all Chinese people way, are though. creepy, but this guy's in a creepy little shop saying all these mysterious things. Do you Comes think Frank was creepy. racist? Comment below. Creepy Chinese man. Let us know in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's an awesome movie. It's got its horror. It's got its comedy. These monsters start multiplying. There's tons of them all over the mm. place. They're wreaking havoc. The cute one stays cute the whole time. Gremlins is a yeah. big as a part of my Christmas as the love interest character in this movie's 
father dying in a chimney as part of her Christmas. Uh, just some, <laughs> some facts I looked up on Gremlins today. Just some reasons why you love it so much. Uh, and I don't know the director. Yeah, well, the yeah, and the director like went off the rails a little bit at some point. Uh, but, <laughs> oh, it's Joe Dante. He, yeah, he, <laughs> he, he did the Burbs, uh, some Twilight Zone, one Twilight Zone episode in the eighties. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, he then, also yeah. did Small Soldiers, and oh, yeah, I know we both really enjoyed. I didn't that know that. Yeah. And in a weird way, very similar. Like a boy gets a gift that's da- more dangerous than it is, and he even keeps the cute one, Archer, in Small yes, Soldiers. Right. Super similar. Now you very think similar movie. Yeah. Uh, he also did the Looney Tunes movie with Brendan Fraser in 2003. Uh, we don't talk about that movie. <laughs> That's all, folks. That's all. <laughs> uh, uh, and Gremlins 2. Got to point Dang. out the sequels, okay, which yeah. is an amazing okay. movie as well. I wanted to do it as my runner-up, but I tried as hard to like remember. Not nah, No Christmas at all. They're just in a big city. Oh, okay. Can't shoehorn it in there. Uh, it was written by Chris Columbus, who wrote The Goonies. And he also discovered America. Ah, stole my joke. <laughs> Weird segue, my favorite folk Christmas movie is Pixels. No, it's Die Hard. It's going to be Die Hard, hard obviously. It was Die Hard, everybody. You told, you're telling me you clicked on this video about folk Christmas movies and you weren't expecting to see Die Hard. Making and I pants. accidentally peeked into your bag earlier, but I yeah. felt like no harm, no foul, because I knew you were going to pick yeah. Die Hard. Die Hard is like the faux Christmas movie. Like, it's not just a background. It, part of it is in the story. Like, Christmas is intertwined yeah. in this action movie. It's like, they are there for a Christmas party, which is part of it. And then you have, like, John McClane killing terrorists and writing ho, ho, ho with blood on their on their sweaters. John McClane. Always in the Christmas spirit, even when killing terrorists. So John McClane is coming into town. He's going to his ex-wife's party in the Nakatomi building. It's like giant, huge building. Uh, and basically these Ukrainian, I don't know, Eastern European terrorists show up. Also and... sound a little bit racist. <laughs> Just saying, if you think that was racist, let us know in the comments. Son of a bitch. <laughs> and I just want to bring this up real quick, because I feel like it needs to be said. Say it. Say it loud, say it proud. Die Hard is about an average man who, while he knows what he's doing, is put in an extraordinary circumstance, and he barely gets out. He's a scrappy guy. He's not like James Bond. In Live Free or Die Hard, John McClane is driving a semi-truck off an exploded interstate into, like, a Harrier fighter jet. Well, David, in life... That is not Die Hard. I'm sorry. When you have to go through (laughs) as many struggles as a man like John McClane, you learn some things. No, I don't believe it. I'm lied. Get out of here. Uh, and I also love the fact that it starts and ends with Christmas music. Yeah. That's another huge Nail part Nail the of Christmas it. movie kind yeah. of thing. And then at the end, the family is reunited. This is their idea of Christmas. I gotta be here for New Year's. <laughs> well, I don't know, Frank. That's pretty much all I got. So today, we're two steps closer to completing our quest of, of finding out what the best movie of all time is. It might very well be Jingle All the Way, but see if that opinion changes in the future. We'll find out. Maybe it'll be Turbo Time forever. Yeah, let's say this together. Next time on...